the stern was so close to the quayside and there was no one there there was no deckhand there at all to say anything and the boat was moving you can see in the video okay pop quiz uh, you see the name underneath the name of the vessel here there's that this is the place that is registered 10 points in fact 20 points if you know where this is don't go google it put it in the comments below i'll give you a clue it's in the cook islands Hi, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Genoa in Italy. Haven't been down to the marina here for a while. Uh, there's a few uh, nice boats in, nothing massive here, but um, we have this one here. It's a 72 meter or 230 foot super yacht called this. And I'm, I'm going to say it, but I'll probably say it incorrectly, a Blue de Nîme. But that's the name of the yacht anyway. Um, this is um, a, kind of a a class is a classic yacht i suppose now it's built in 1980 it has a large capacity for a yacht of its size because it can carry 28 guests and it has a crew of 23 which is you know quite quite a lot of guests for a yacht of 72 meters um it is for sale if you're interested and the price is around 50 million dollars So just as I started filming, the crew started a boat drill, as you can see. Now, how do I know it's a boat drill? Well, the crew are mustering on the aft of the vessel. And if it was a real fire in port, they would muster on the quayside. Also, they are preparing to launch the rescue boat, which you wouldn't be doing if you were in port. So whenever we have a fire drill like this, we always simulate being at sea because obviously in port, the first thing we do is call the fire brigade and muster all the crew outside as i said and then uh, and then you know attempt to fight the fire until the fire brigade get there but they would not be launching a rescue boat in port but it had a massive rebuild in 2019 it was actually extended by 16 meters now where would they extend the yacht like this most likely um when you extend a vessel Usually it's the stern, so the, probably 16 meter extensions probably here. Uh, the easiest thing to put on, chopping a, a, a ship in half and putting a section in the middle, much more difficult uh, than uh, putting a stern extension on it. That's most likely where, it, where uh, the extension came. All right, so these guys are still running the engines because they're having a problem here uh, connecting to the uh, shore power and I've got some of the engineers out here working to try and figure out what's going on um, their shore power connection seems to be at fault I saw them working on it earlier on before I was filming and hence they're still running um, they're still having to keep power going generators or whatever on the boat so it's quite noisy so this is motor yacht Ronan now this boat was built by Lurson in 1993 it's it's a um, 58 meter or oh, it's 190 feet and it has a top speed of 30 knots very powerful engines very sl very slim and uh, it's a, a nine meter beam the width um, and it's very quick 30 knots is quick for a yacht so whoever had this commissioned whoever ordered this boat wanted speed over comfort not necessarily wanted the comfort which is most yachts go for they're not that fast really but this is a 30 knot uh, top speed which is very impressive all right so this boat here is moti yacht g3 and this is a chart yacht it's billed as one of the most successful chart yachts i don't know how you work that out but that's what it says on one of the websites that, uh, that they, you can charter it from. You can charter it for 163,000 euros a week. Now, the, 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 on the AIS, it says that it was la its last port was in the US and it, 
and it's now here. So for a boat of this size, it would be impossible for it to go from the US to here without stopping somewhere like Gibraltar or something, assuming it crossed. But the thing that makes me think that this boat came across on, on a ship transporter or a yacht transporter is that the AIS said it, uh, that on the 23rd it was in um, the US and on the 24th it was here. So it must be a very fast boat if it managed to come from Florida to here in one day. So most likely the AIS was switched off, the boat crossed over the Atlantic on the back of a ship and then they switched it on yesterday and then updated the location. Um, and that's probably why it says that, but yeah, very unlikely that it, that it made that trip in one day. That was very strange. So I've been watching for about, about five minutes and they've got the engines running, they're, they're in gear and they're moving the vessel side to side with the, with the um, propellers. Now, there seems to be maybe the, the guy on the bridge wing is, is, is talking to someone, probably the engineers, maybe they got a problem, which is not, nothing unusual, but they were so close to the, to the stern, was so close to the quayside, and there was no one there, there was no deckhand there at all to say anything, and the boat was moving, you can see in the video, the boat was moving side to side. Now, okay, it's got um, lines on the, on the bow, so it shouldn't be able to move backwards, but there was very little space there if they if they ha happened to make a mistake there they could have hit the quayside very easily so yeah and then eventually a deckhand appeared but there was a good five minutes of them doing that with nobody on the stern which is very very unusual <laughs> Well, the weather in uh, Italy continues to be epic. It's about 23 degrees today, which is for me is perfect in terms of it's sunny, it's warm, you know, but it's not too hot that I'm running for cover. So it, for me, 23 degrees, perfect. Yeah.